have for one resume. Uh, our conversation with ABC's medical correspondent, Dr. Darian Sutton, is here now to talk about much more about all these new high tech yeah. medical devices that are used to track sleep apnea, sleep issues. I have been tracking my sleep. My first question for you is mm -hmm. Is the information that we get from all these devices, is it credible? That's mm -hmm. a great question. You know, I'm always weary whenever new devices come out that you can buy over the counter, but I do believe that there's great benefit in this. There are some episodes where you can find erroneous information, mm -hmm. but overall, I think that this is a great opportunity. It's not a diagnostic tool, but a great screening tool to help understand if you are at risk. And that, I mean, the, okay, so you get the information. Yeah. Should you present it to your doctor or because I've been told by my doctor to stop diagnosing <laughs> myself. Well, so. I can, I've, de I've definitely been on the other side of that. I, I personally love when patients come in with their diagnosis because it helps me to kind of parse through what we need to do. Uh -huh. What this does is it gives you a warning, if you would imagine. So after 30 days, and I'm speaking specifically to the sleep apnea part of this test that was just FDA approved, you wear your watch, you sleep, you get a warning at the end of your sleep or at the end of a couple of days, and it lets mm -hmm. you know, hi, you are at a higher risk of sleep apnea, you should look into other testing to get a formal diagnosis. There's an estimated 30 million people that have sleep apnea. What's more concerning is only about 6 million have a formal diagnosis. Right. Mm -hmm. So that leaves more than 20 million without understanding that they're at elevated risk. And it's a big deal. Sleep apnea comes with a whole slew of, issues. of issues. More than just heavy snoring, increasing your risk of high blood pressure, diabetes, chronic disease later on in life. So, so important to attack early. Let me ask you about these AirPods that yes. can be used as hearing devices, hearing aids. What are your thoughts about them? I mean, it's, you used to need a, um, a prescription to go to get, get a hearing, a hearing aid and be fitted and everything yeah. like that. Well, I think, number one, there are different types of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to talk to your provider and understand what type of hearing loss you have before you use products that might just augment the sound. There are many different ways that people can lose their hearing. So I think getting tested is important. But regardless, this is an opportunity to provide more access. Mm -hmm. These things are so expensive. So I look at these products, these devices, hearing aids, and even the sleep app a device, these are moments where people can get more information about themselves yeah. that they can then use to talk to your provider. Yeah, I guess that's the upside, that you're actually looking after your health. Absolutely. Just don't diagnose yourself. Exactly. <laughs>